Hello and welcome to a new video about electric field. We're talking about capacitors. Last time we had a look into the mathematical description of the behavior of a capacitor and we realized uh, there are wild formulas, wild, wild formulas called differential equations and so on. And I said today I'm going to explain for a scenario yeah, what are the solutions of those uh, differential equations. And I'm going to tell you what is the scenario. The scenario is looking like this. Uh, look at that. We have here a capacitor. Mm. We have a voltage source. Uh, these are two different switch positions because we have a switch and we can flick the switch from this side to this side and then the back. So we can switch the switch. Yeah. Uh, and well, so we can either switch to a voltage source, the capacitor, to a voltage source, or we can short circuit the capacitor. This is what we can do. I also drawn in a resistance, uh, resistor, because there is some resistance either in the lines, uh, or usually there is also some resistance. I mean, is it, is it uh, a device? Yeah, or is it a resistance which is just built in and so on? There is resistance always. Right, so I model, I made a model of this with this R here. So we have a RC combination, which can be switched from short circuit to voltage and back. And now, this is the load case. So sudden switch of a voltage to an RC combination. And now I tell you how this looks like. And we're starting by thinking about this. Okay, let's think about what is happening here. Well, let's say we are first in this situation, a long term in this situation. So everything, if there's short circuit, everything is zero. There is no, no current running. Yeah, no current. Uh, and now we switch whoop, to this situation. Huh? At a certain point in time, we switch to this, to this situation. And I say, this point in time is here. Okay. Here, at this point in time, we switched from this situation to this situation. Yeah. Before, the, the UC was zero. And also, UC, uh, I, I was zero, because there was no current running. Both. Both was zero. This is the situation. Yeah. And now, we had suddenly this U0 switch to this combination. Now let's think about what is happening. Let's make a loop here and, and, and calculate this loop. Here, I call it loop one. This is our loop we, we want to loop one. Let's see what is happening at loop one. U0. Minus UC minus UR equals zero volts. From this, I can immediately follow that UC, UC plus UR equals U zero. So those two voltages in, in sum, yeah, are the same as U0. Again, again clear. Uh, hopefully, meanwhile, it should be no problem for us to, to, to follow those thoughts. Yeah. And what is happening? Yeah. What is happening? Let's think about what is happening. U C very shortly after we switch on, we flick the switch, yeah. Is is was there already current going into? No, there was no current. Yeah? The current started to flow, but let's say we are watching this situation quite briefly before it's even getting charged. If there is no charge inside this capacitor, UC is zero. Huh? So UC will stay zero in this, at this precise moment at, at the flick switch, the flick of the switch moment, we will have zero volts there. And if you see and you are in total U zero, yeah, you are means 
is U0. <laughs> so if UR is U0, I have now a, a, a resistor and a voltage at the resistor. So there must be, according Ohm's law, there must be a, a, a current running through huh, this resistor. And this current can be calculated. And this current, I call it I0 equals. And now, because UR is U0, U0 divided by This is what is going to happen. So I have somewhere here an I0. And I will... draw here a line. This is the line! <laughs> I will draw here a line uh, that we can see it in the whole diagram. So the current yeah, is jumping to I0 at this moment. We are turning on and the current is jumping to I0 because simply this is zero and UR is, is uh, U0. Huh? Now there is current rushing into our capacitor. The capacitor is starting to charge. If the capacitor is starting to charge, UC will be built up. Okay, So UC will start growing with whatever rate. Yeah? So I will also throw in here U0. Here we have U0. I will also make this here. So here we'll already draw in because we need it we need it later. So you see is starting to grow. If you see is growing, you are must be less. If you are is less, yeah, then also I must be less because if there is less voltage at the resistance, I is less. Yeah? This means the capacitor will be charged, still be charged, but slower. Huh? So the, the, the capacitor is charged a little bit slower. So you see is still growing, but slower. You are is still dropping, but slower. I is dropping, but slower. And so on and so on. Every point later in my, in my uh, time, yeah, the capacitor will still be charged, but slower and slower and slower and slower and slower over time. Okay? At the beginning it's pretty fast, with the maximum possibility, yeah? and over time it's getting slower and slower and slower and slower. And now we come to this, this is, this is the physics behind it. Now we come to uh, a situation where we take these uh, differential equations and are searching for a function uh, for i from, from tau, uh, i from t, which is somehow um, describing what we just talked. Yeah? We can solve this, yeah? but not yet, because in mathematics, in mathematics we are usually not that far at, the, at that moment in time. So I tell you the solution, and I can tell you that this i, depending on t, yeah, equals our I zero, this one, yeah, multiplied by E Euler number minus raised by the power of minus T divided by tau, a time constant tau. Yeah? And this time constant tau equals R time c. Yeah? This is the so-called time constant. Yeah? And now I can write it down here. If we have 1 tau, we have 2 tau, we have 3 tau, we have 4 tau, and so on. Yeah? So this is, and r times t, so this is ohms, this is farad. Yeah? And if you put in si values, base values, you will realize that the result here is seconds. So this tau is really seconds. If you multiply ohm and farad, yeah, you get seconds. <laughs> uh, 
You can try it. You can try it. So what is happening if t equals here? Here is now tau. Here is two tau. Here is three tau. Here is four tau. What is happening if t equals tau? Then we have written here e raised by the power of minus one. No? Let's put this into our calculator. Yeah? So we have, where's e here? e raised by the power of minus one, zero to 3678, 36%, 36.7%. So I multiplied by 36. So here we are at 36.7%. These are 36.8%. So see, almost 62% are already gone. And here I would again have only 36.8% but from discharge. So every tau I have only 36.8%. 36 and what I also can tell you, at the beginning, we will have a steepness, steepness which looks exactly like that. So if I make a, a connection between the I0, so the beginning of this, and the end of this, so, so, so where it will go in the end, yeah, to zero, one tau, this is exactly the beginning, this, this, the steepness at the beginning. So actually what it would look like is something like that. This is how the charging current of a capacitor looks like. Depending on R and C, if we have a big capacitor, this tower is long, then this takes usually long, then this is, I don't know, <laughs> not 30 milliseconds, it's 300 milliseconds more. Yeah? So it's just the scaling, but it always will look the same. And now what is happening to UC? Yeah? UC will start at zero. So UC from T equals, and now we have U zero, and now we have one minus E minus raised by the power of minus T tau. That's it. Yeah? So if this was uh, so 36.8 percent. Yeah. Let's see what is one minus this. It's 63.2 percent. So here we are raising to 63.2 percent of u zero. Huh? And again, and again, and again. Yeah. So here we have. already the rest, yeah, 63.2% around. Yeah? And again, we have the, the beginning steepness looking like that. So our voltage on our capacitor will look like that. That's how the voltage, when charging, the voltage and current, uh, when charging a capacitor, are looking like. Cool, huh? And you can, you can put this in, uh, here in our differential equations, and then you realize, uh -huh, mm, aha, it's really, it's really fulfilled. Mm, because simply it's a solution. And now, at a second point in time, second point in time, we're switching back. Whoop. Let's say we stayed quite a long while here. We're switching back, and this back switching is exactly this point here. Okay. So now we have charged our capacitor 
to u0. So we will start at u0 because we are ending up here at u0 and our current is also 0, 0 amps i. Okay. Now again we make, we have a, a look at the loop, at this loop here. Loop 2. Let's see what loop 2 means. All right here, loop 2. Ah. Loop 2. Let's pretend I have never written this. <laughs> we will see why. Loop 2. Uh, so let's see, it's minus uc minus ur is 0 volts. Yeah. So this means ur is minus uc so it's the other way yeah what does it mean in the first moment when there was no current there's no current at the beginning when the first moment there is no current so in the first moment ur is minus uc so it's minus u0 because we are charged to u0 and the current is jumping to minus to minus here we have minus i0 yeah. This is what the current is doing. Whoop. This is what what is happening here. Yeah. Because the, the the capacitor charge is U0 and then we switch and UR it becomes book minus U0 and the current is running in this direction. So again, so it's minus current in this direction and is starting to decharge. If it's starting to decharge, the current will drain uh, a load here from this capacitor, the UC will drop and the current is getting smaller because UR is getting smaller. The smaller UR gets, the slower the decharge of the capacitor is getting. So it will probably look exactly like that, but the other way around. Huh? And this is exactly what I try to show you now. So here, here again we have those, we have here tau, we have uh, 2 tau, we have 3 tau, we have 4 tau. So this is looking exactly the same as before. And our current, yeah, I from T, in this case, we have minus I0 multiplied by E minus d divided by tau, it's the same. Yeah? So we again, we have here, somewhere, here somewhere, here somewhere, here somewhere. Again, we are here at only 36.8 percent. Yeah? And our current is looking like that. This is why I said, let's pretend I've never written this L2 here. What is happening, happening to you? This is decharged with exactly this, this, and so we have U0 multiplied by E minus D divided by tau. So also here we are dropping we have this beginning steepness. We're dropping here also to 36.8%, huh? but from U0 huh? and all the way down. So here our, our voltage, our voltage will look like that. This is how a capacitor is getting decharged. Those are the two situations. Huh? So we have a time constant. This time constant is somehow determining how long this takes, but Regardless, 
if we zoom in, it's always looking the same way. Mm -hmm. It's always looking the same way with this e uh, e uh, uh, power function, and well, that's that that's it. Yeah, you can always pretend always that if you have situations where you switch something to a, a capacitor, that in the first moment, if there is no current, the capacitor voltage is not changing, and this helps usually a lot. Yeah. Helping a lot. Well, I I realize, of course, that this is not that that easy. Yeah. So what we're going to do in next video is we will uh, make an example. So we will calculate this. Yeah. These these forms. I just drawn them now. I said that's it. Yeah. That's it. So we'll really make a, a function, an example, charging, and we'll also explain this tau a little bit more uh, because sometimes it's difficult to see what resistance is acting and yeah next video for this time thank you very much for listening goodbye